Okay, well, welcome back, dear students, to this uh, general uh, introduction about models. So, in this one, it's going to be a general uh, review. Okay, we will go through the different types of models. Okay, uh, also we will try to uh, to define models. What do we mean by models? And also we we'll give examples uh, for uh, each type of model and how it is used. Also, we will talk about the form regarding the use of models, which is very important. So this one is going to sound to you like a general introduction. We are not give all, uh, almost everything, but not in detail. The details will be uh, provided to you in the following uh, video tutorials of this uh, series, which I hope that you enjoy. Uh, so model auxiliaries, as you can see, uh, generally express uh, speaker's attitudes. Uh, for example, uh, models can express that a speaker feels uh, something is necessary, uh, advisable, uh, permissible, uh, possible, or probable. And in addition, they can convey the strength uh, of those attitudes. Each model has more than one meaning or use. Uh, now, this, uh, uh, this little paragraph, it simply tells you that, uh, for example, when you give the word, uh, you revise your lessons. For example, here we have this statement, you revise by your lessons or your courses. Now, uh, we have the meaning here for the verb that is given is simply the meaning of revise. Okay, that's all. But when you add to it the model, a specific model, like if you say, you should revise lessons, your lessons, your courses. Now, in addition to the meaning of revising, here we have an additional meaning, an additional attitude that is expressed, added to the meaning of revise, which is the attitude of giving advice. So the person here is not simply telling people to revise, but also telling them to uh, the, uh, the uh, attitude of advising. So he's giving the person to whom he's talking an advice. So this is what we mean by uh, expressing speakers' attitudes. In addition to the verbs, we have different types of attitudes that can be added to the verbs, like, for example, here we have uh, sometimes uh, models can express that the speaker feels uh, something is necessary, okay? Uh, sometimes uh, he can, let me show you, highlight this for you using a pen. So sometimes the speakers, okay, we call this speakers' attitudes, okay, uh, that are added, okay? to the meaning of the verbs that we use on our, our uh, communication. And this speaker feels something, for example, is necessary, or feels that something is advisable, feels that something is permissible, feels that something is possible, feels something is probable, etc., etc. These are, this is, these are kinds of speakers of attitudes. They are also referred to as modalities. That's why we have the verb or the, the word models, okay? Models. Now, in English, there are different uh, types of models. So you can see here, we have can, we have could, had better, may, might, must, ought to, shall, should, will, and would. So all these are examples of models that are used, model auxiliaries used in English. Now, this, these are some of the examples. For example, uh, I can do it, you could do it, he had better do it, she may do it, it must do it, ought to do it, etc. etc. So all in those these examples here, we have uh, okay uh, models that are uh, used. Okay. Now there are a few things that we have to take into account and remember about the use of models. Now these are the following points. First one here we have that uh, models. Okay. Do not take a final s, even when the subject is she. Okay, or he, or it, as we have it here. Normally, we know that when we have the third person singular in present simple, we normally should add s to the verb at the end of the verb. But for the models, we never add uh, something like that. Okay, we never add 
the final S. For example, here you say she can do it, but if you say she can do it, that's not correct. Models are followed immediately by the simple form. Okay, the simple form of the verb. What do we mean by the simple form of the verb? We mean the infinitive without to. She can do it. Okay, she can do it. So here we have this one here, do. Okay, it is the infinitive without to. That's why it is called simple. Okay, it's called simple uh, form of the verb. Uh, but if you say, for example, she can to do it, that's not correct, okay, that's not correct. Uh, she can does it, that's not correct. If you say she did it, etc., etc., start conjugating the verb. No, you don't have to conjugate the verb because it's an infinitive without to. The only exception is ought, which is followed by an infinitive to. Normally, this to here which you have after the verb, look in the example, she ought to go. Normally this two here, which you have here, okay, let me highlight it for you as well, this two here, it has, it belongs to the model, okay, it belongs to the model, it goes with the model, it has nothing to do with the idea that it is infinitive of the verb go, no, we normally use simply the simple form of the verb, the infinitive without two, after the model auxiliaries. So these are some information we have to bear in mind regarding uh, model auxiliaries. There are now model, uh, model auxiliaries. We can have two types. Either we can have single word mo uh, models, okay, like can do it, could do it, may do it. Sometimes we can have what we call phrasal models. Here we have an example. Okay, this is an example. Had uh, better in the sense that it's composed of two words. Sometimes and these are further examples for you, okay, regarding uh, phrasal models, okay, regarding them. So, for example, we have be able to do it, be going to do it, be supposed to do it, have to do it, and have got to do it, in the sense that it's composed more of more than one word. So, phrasal models are common expressions whose meanings are similar to those of some of the model auxiliaries. For example, you have be able to, it is the same as the model can. Uh, have to is the same as the model, some, some examples as uh, must, have got to do, same as a model must. Uh, so, similar to those of some of models, for example, be able to is similar to can, be going to is similar to will. And infinitive, to, plus, the simple form of verb is used in these similar expressions. So here, if you notice, in all of these, okay, phrasal models, we have Okay, uh, uh, different from what we have said here, uh, we have a preposition to what goes with the verb. Okay, so this is it for a kind of general introduction overview of what we're going to cover in more details in the following video tutorials. See you next time. Thank you very much.